In today's video, we're going to talk about equilibrium, and this is part three of a multi-part video on equilibrium, and we're going to specifically talk about how you can manipulate um, equations and consequently its effect on uh, calculating the K for that equation. So here's three rules that we're going to really go over. And these, as we look at them just on this slide, may not make a lot of sense, so we'll go to the next slide to, to kind of expand what we mean. But basically, if you have multiple equations that you're adding together, the way that the k's for each of those equations work is they multiply together. All right, if you have a reaction running in the forward manner and you figure out the k for that, if you want to run that reaction in reverse, then there's a the k in reverse is related to the um, inverse of the k forward. Or the final manipulation is if you have an equation and you multiply through that equation, the effect that it's going to have on the equilibrium constant is it's going to take the uh, the k and raise it to the power of the factor you multiplied through. So these are kind of reverse order of operations. So so let's let's see how this applies and this will really make a lot more sense. And uh, the other thing you want to learn here is just kind of how to, to if you have multiple steps in a reaction, or if you have uh, two reactions you want to put together to get the resulting um, K, it works very similar to doing Hess's law, where if, if you um, add reactions together to figure out the net energy, you can just add the energies. Well, in this uh, sense, what we're going to do is figure out how the Ks are combined when you add steps together. So. Basically, here we have um, nitrogen reacting with oxygen to make nitrogen monoxide. We know that's an unfavorable reaction because we breathe nitrogen and oxygen all the time and this poisonous gas isn't automatically formed. But then in a second step, if you took NO, the nitrogen monoxide, reacted it with more oxygen, you could actually make nitrogen dioxide. If we could add these together, as we learned with Hess's law, you would take reactants and products that are common to both um, uh, equations and they could cancel. And then what your, rem your remainder is, you just sum it down. So here we have N2, we bring it down. We have two moles. There's a mole of O2 in this reaction. There's a mole of O2 in the second reaction. So you add those together, you get two moles of O2. The products that are left over here are two moles of um, nitrogen dioxide. So now here's where we apply that rule that says, look, if you're going to take two equilibrium expressions and you add them together, then how do you deal with these constants? What, In other words, what's the equilibrium constant for this new e uh, equation, combined equation? And the rule says you don't add the k's like you would with Hess's law where you do simply add the energies. You multiply k's. So consequently, I have a K of 4.3 times 10 to the minus 25 multiplied by 6.4 times 10 to the 9th. You get 2.8 E to the minus 10th. So there's the KC. And if you wanted to write the equilibrium expression, you could go right to the finalized equation here. Put your products over reactants, raise them to the appropriate power. And now you have a new equilibrium expression for this combined equation. So that's the application of rule one. So let's talk about uh, rule two. And, and as an example, we're going to take this dinitrogen tetraoxide. It's going to decompose into two moles of nitrogen dioxide. And so now we're going to actually, this is just a good exercise. I'm going to show you that, look, if you had, um, if you let this reaction run to equilibrium and you measured the concentrations, here's one, two, three, four different experiments at the same ran at the same temperature so if we set up the expression where we say okay well what's the products divided by the reactants and you solve you get the same k every time as we'd expect at the same temperature so the forward reaction is this it has an equilibrium constant of 10.4 which means it's favorable running towards um, products so now let's apply the rule that says look what if we wanted to run it in reverse what if we want to do this? Now we want to take two nitrogen dioxides, um, combine them, and get uh, dinitrogen tetraoxide. So what happens to the equilibrium expression? Well, the rule says, by the way, here's your expression for the equilibrium in this reverse reaction. But the rule says 
If you want to figure out the equilibrium expression for the reverse reaction, it is the inverse of the equilibrium uh, constant for the forward reaction. So we know the forward is 10.4. Basically, plug and chug. And you solve 1 divided by 10.4 is 0 0.0962. So that's how that applies. So learn that rule, running in reverse. And here's the third application, that third rule. Basically, what if you had a situation where I actually want to express the same equilibrium, but I'm interested in expressing it not in two moles of NO2, but in one mole of NO2. And that might just be more practical because I actually have numbers for the creation of one mole of NO2. And we know from what we've done with Hess's law, it's okay to multiply through by some factor, whether that's a, a fraction or a, a two or four, whatever you need to do here. And as long as I apply it all the way through, I'd have half a mole of N2O4 would yield one mole of NO2. And now I've, I've achieved my goal, but now the question is, what happens to this equilibrium constant? How would it change? Okay, so here's the expression. Here's the equilibrium expression for my new reaction. So that is the coefficient of 1 half, so you raise it to the power of 1 half, i.e. it's the square root. The rule says the way to solve for the new k is raise it to the power that you multiplied through by. So consequently, the original k was 10.4, so I raise it to the 1 half power. That's what I multiplied through by, right here. So I take the square root of 10.4 and get 3.22. So here's how I can solve for this new equilibrium constant just by knowing this third rule. All right, so now here's, a, here's an opportunity to put a few of these together. Calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for the following hypothetical equation. I'm trying to figure out what the equilibrium expression is for E plus F yielding G. But all I know is that I have this one reaction where 2G's is able to create an H. Remember, this is hypothetical. The KC for that is 3.1 times 10 to the minus 4. And here's a second reaction where H um, decomposes into 2E's and 2F's. The KC for that is 2.8E to the uh, 22nd. So now, how, how would I stack these two equations together to equal this? How do they add to re result in that? So here's the rule of thumb that I would teach you. The first thing is just work left to right on the target equation. All right? So I know that I need one mole of E first. And the only expression that has a mole of E is equation two. But it has E as a product, but I need E as a reactant. So what I have to do with this thing is I need to flip the expression, run it in reverse. And we know what to do with KC if I run it in reverse. But the other thing I need to do is I need only one mole of E. So what am I going to do? I'm going to, to, to get equation, I'm going to use equation two to get E and F as reactants. I'm going to reverse it and multiply through by one half. So if I take equation two, I reverse it, multiply by, through by one half, I get this expression right here. And this is what I'm looking for because see how I've got one mole of E as a reactant? And consequently, I happen to get one mole of F as a reactant too, so that takes care of two of these pieces of the target equation. But now I need to think about what happened to my um, equilibrium constant. I flipped it, so that means I put it over one, right? And then I multiplied by through by one half, so that means raise it to the power of one half. So if I did that all together in one fell swoop, I basically took this equilibrium constant, uh, put it over one, that's the flipping part, reverse uh, expression, and then multiplying by through by two is this, or by one half is the same as uh, applying one half power to the equilibrium constant. So when I do all this math, I end up with 5.98 e to the minus 12. That's the equilibrium constant for this reaction. So to get to equation one and to get g as a product, you're going to have to reverse. So now we can look and see that. If you're working your way through, we got E and F covered, right? So now if we get over here and we're, we're trying to find G, it's a product, but in this case, G is a reactant, so I got to flip it and also multiply through by one half. And if I do that, once again, same rules apply. I basically have to 
Uh, when I reverse it, I put it over 1. I multiply through by 1 half, which means take the equilibrium constant and raise it to the half power. When I get done, I get 56.8. So now I have everything stacked up over here where I can finally get to my net equation by adding these two reactions. Kind of Hess's Law style again. Sum them up. Cross out things that are common on reactant and product side. Then add down. And I've got the equation I'm looking for. But then, to use the rules we're learning in this series of slides, if you're actually adding equilibrium expressions, you should be multiplying the equilibrium constants. All right, multiply those together, and voila, here is your overall K constant for this ex exact uh, expression. So you've learned three steps, basically. Uh, one, if you reverse the equation, you take the K, use it as an inverse. If you uh, multiply through by some factor on, the, on an expression, then you take the K and raise it, raise it to the power of that factor. And then last but not least, when you are um, trying to add together equilibrium expressions, the Ks are actually multiplied. All right, so here's a chance for you to practice. Question one, here's the, here's the reaction we're going to work on. You have hydrogen. You're reacting it with chlorine gas. You get an hydrochloric uh, acid as a gas form. The Kc for that is pretty favorable, 7.6 times 10 to the eighth. So now here's what I'd like you to do. In the first step, calculate the Kc for the following reaction. So, so what's different here? If you look through, what I've done is multiplied through by 1 half. So what would be the Kc after you multiply through by 1 half? And then a second question would be, find the Kc for the decomposition of 2HCl to make H2 and Cl2. What would the Kc be if you reverse the reaction? All right. Stop the video, see if you can work this on your own, and when you get your final answer, then restart the video. Okay, so let's see how you did on the first uh, expression. If you're basically multiplying through by one half, then the Kc, which is 7.6 times 10 to the eighth power, should be raised to the power of one half, which is the same thing as taking the square root. So you end up with 2.8e to the four as your final answer. In the second step, when you reverse a reaction, equilibrium constant is turned to an inverse, uh, divided into 1. So if you take the original equilibrium constant, divide it into 1, you get 1.32e to the minus ninth. All right, so here you're going to work on another practice problem where you have two hypothetical reactions. One is A reacts with two equivalents of B to make C. And in the second reaction, you have C decomposing into two Ds. Here's the equilibrium concept for each of those. Can you combine these in some way to come up with this reaction where two Ds yields an A plus a two, two Bs when you decompose it? And can you find the resulting Kc for that? So now at this point, stop your video. See if you can rearrange these first uh, two equations here. And, and and stack the equations and solve for this expression and find the resulting Kc. And when you're done, you can restart the video and check your answer. Okay, let's see how you did. So once again, remember the way to solve these is, here's the target equation. Work left to right. The first thing I need is two equivalents of D. Now if you look in here, reaction A, uh, 1 doesn't even have a D in it, but reaction 2 does. But unfortunately, that D is a product, not a reactant. So in order to make it a reactant, I need to reverse this equation, run it in reverse. So I can do that. But I got to remember that that Kc changes when I run it in reverse by dividing it into 1. So here's my new Kc for that. OK, let's keep working. Now the products I need are A and 2B, which are in expression 1, only in this case they're reactants. So I need to flip that second equation. Apply the same rule. Okay, now I'm ready to add these two reactions, right? Cancel out the C's, sum them up. I get exactly what I'm looking for. 2D yields A plus 2B. If I want to add these two together, what I do, right? Because the equations were added together, the uh, equilibrium constants are multiplied together. And so my answer is 7.2. 
I hope this has helped you understand where you're working with e equilibrium constants and knowing how to manipulate them depending on whether you reverse a reaction, whether you're multiplying multiple reactions together, or if you're um, trying to multiply through an equation by some factor, how that's going to affect the equilibrium constant.